today I want to talk about five nutritional deficiencies that can definitely cause depression from a physical level. I've been doing a serious deep dive into DNA and I'm finding all sorts of fascinating things in relationship to people becoming susceptible to nutritional deficiencies on top of having a fairly decent diet. And out of all the things that DNA can definitely influence, the mood is right at the top of the list. Now, I just want to clarify something. When you're looking at a DNA test, you're not looking at levels of neurotransmitters or vitamins or hormones, things like that. You're looking at gene variations or alterations between people. And there are certain genes that can give you a susceptibility to having more of a problem with a certain thing than someone else. And I'm talking about vitamins that can affect neurotransmitters. So today I'm going to talk about the five nutrients in relationship to them being the most common reason for depression. And when I get done with the list, I don't recommend taking all of these vitamins, okay? I just recommend taking one at a time. Um, so that way you really know which one is involved in your mood. Now let's start with number one. It's B12. If you're deficient in B12, you're not going to be able to make serotonin. Now, B12 is involved with a lot of different things in the body, but I want to focus more on your mood. So B12 is absolutely necessary, essential for making the neurotransmitter serotonin. And there can be several genes involved with why you're not absorbing B12, or it could be in the transfer of B12. But the point is, if you have a problem with this genetically, boy, it's going to be really hard to satisfy B12. Now, I'm assuming uh, you're consuming animal meats, okay? I'm, I'm assuming that you're not a vegetarian or a vegan because that could be the reason why you're not getting B12. Because B12 is in red meat, it's in organ meats, it's in animal protein. The other reason is that your stomach acid is not very concentrated. So you have like this weak uh, stomach acid where you don't have enough acid. And the way that you know you don't have enough acid is that you actually have acid reflux. Okay, it's coming up through that valve on the top of your stomach. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, um, GERD, then what you need to do before you even take B12 is start taking betaine hydrochloride, okay? And I put a link down below of what video to watch. Best source of B12, you have a choice. You can either do a methylcobalamin or hydroxy B12, okay? Do not take the synthetic version of B12 called cyanocobalamin. Now, the second thing I would try is folate, okay? Folate. And I'm not talking about the synthetic version folic acid. I'm talking about folate. If you are deficient in folate, okay, and there's many people who are, I would say 30 to 40% of the population based on their genetics, they have this problem with this uh, very specific gene called MTHFR. Now, normally folate is in dark leafy green vegetables. And to fix this problem, you don't want to start taking folic acid. In fact, you want to make sure you don't have an abundance of this synthetic version in your supplements or even in, they, they put it in like an enrichment for nutritional yeast. You want the unfortified version of uh, nutritional yeast. But the nutrient that you need to take is called methylfolate. In fact, it's even used by doctors as a natural antidepressant. Folate is involved with a lot of things. And if you're deficient, you can have a lot of problems. You could be weak, you could be tired, you could be lethargic but you can also be depressed. And you might even be good to get a, uh, a supplement that has both B12 and folate and take those together. So you'd want to get one that has like the methyl folate and the methyl cobalamin. I know I told you to take these separately, but with these two, uh, especially uh, if we're talking about genetic issues, um, it's probably a good idea to take those together because they do work together. All right, so you take these for a few days, see how you feel, and if you feel great, then I wouldn't even worry about going on to the next three deficiencies, okay? I would just focus on this right here, and then now we know that was your big problem. And the question is, how long would you take those? Well, if you truly have a genetic problem, you'd have to take those the rest of your life. Let's say, for example, your depression does not lift when you take B12 or folate. What would be the next thing to take? That would be vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is called the happy vitamin because it's you get it from sunshine, right? Now there's other things that you can get from the sun that can elevate your mood, but vitamin D definitely, if you're deficient, you're going to likely be depressed. In fact, I would venture to say that 
great majority of people who are depressed have very low vitamin D levels. So vitamin D is involved with so many things, the immune system, uh, inflammation, your blood sugars, and the production of not just serotonin, but dopamine as well. And recently when I'm reviewing these genetic reports and I'm looking at them with various people, I would say like so far, like 80% of them have a problem with the vitamin D receptor. So either they're not converting the inactive to the active form of vitamin D very easily, or they're not able to absorb vitamin D very easily. So the simple solution is to start taking uh, vitamin D3. Now, how much? I would recommend taking about 20,000 IUs, um, especially if you're depressed. Now, if you're really depressed, it might not be a bad idea to take 50,000 IUs once a week. After you try vitamin D3, you go on to number four, thymine B1. Now, a deficiency of B1 can definitely uh, make you depressed, but it can also make you have anxiety and also um, highly irritated, like you have no patience and you're about to fly off the handle and you have a lot of nervous energy and tension that you can't release. And the most common reason for a B1 deficiency is the overconsumption of refined carbohydrates and sugars, okay? Yeah. So that's the breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, that type of things. If you start taking B1, probably would take three to four minutes, maybe five, and you will see a change, okay? You're, it's going to lift you up. It's going to make you feel better. Um, then you know you definitely need to change your diet. But B1 can definitely affect your mood, um, mainly for anxiety, but definitely for depression as well. The last one is zinc. Zinc is involved in many, many different biochemical reactions. Um, but if you're deficient in zinc, uh, which a lot of depressed people are, uh, you're going to have a very hard time making neurotransmitters. I think the reason why people might be deficient in zinc could be a genetic problem. It can also be a diet issue. They are a vegetarian or vegan uh, because zinc is in red meat and animal products and also shellfish and seafood. Those are the five nutrients that I would recommend taking one by one, excluding the first two, take them together, if you have depression and anxiety. Now, there are many other things you can do to also improve your mood. Uh, probiotics is a really big one. So get a good probiotic because your microbes make neurotransmitters as well. And whatever's going on as an imbalance down into your gut is going to affect you up here, especially if you had antibiotics. Okay, there's so many people who get depressed after a bout of antibiotics and they stay depressed because they never replenish the microbes. So anytime you ever take a, an antibiotic, also take a probiotic at the same time. The next thing is fasting. Start getting on an intermittent fasting program. I would say like a pattern of um, 18 hours of fasting and six hour eating window would be perfect to help bring up your mood when you fast. You fix your brain, you fix a lot of things in the body, and definitely your mood will go up. And of course, I'm going to recommend combining that with keto. Both the ketogenic diet and fasting together will um, usually uh, fix a depression. And then of course, being out in the sun can actually increase your mood, as well as regular exercise, um, just to keep the stress off the body and stimulate certain genetics that can actually uh, elevate your mood. And so if I had depression, I would want to know all of the key factors involved in getting rid of it. And the next most important video would be this one right here. You should check it out.